Just don't, don't lose this moment. Don't lose this moment.
Because our brother, Dr. Dave Rogers, is going to come, and he is full of the Word of God. He is full of the words of life, and he's going to come and share. Vice President, Rivers Edge International Fellowship, founder and chancellor of, uh, of Montgomery Bible College and Seminary, a man of many, many, many talents. God has blessed you, my friend. Now you come and bless us in Jesus' name.
patience. They are not going to know what you know, and they're going to ask questions. Long suffering. They will make mistakes. Yes. Help them work out their salvation. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's look at pray real quick. Pray for those who are in Christ. Praying is not the literal asking and keep on asking, knocking and keep on knocking. Because when Jesus said that, he was talking to the Jews who had yet had a Savior. Right. And for them, it was like, you know, all right, let's keep on petitioning the Lord. Yeah. But for those who are in Christ, are you in Christ? Right. Yes. If, yes. if you're not, we can fix that right now. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're not in Christ, just pray with me. Father, forgive me of my sin. I accept the price paid by Jesus yes. Christ at the cross. Yes. And I accept that new life. And I give you yes. my old life. Yes. And I want to walk with you for the rest of my days. I invite you to live with me. Yes. Amen. If you pray that sincerely and meant it in your heart, then you are saved. You're saved from a judgment, but you begin a new life with Christ. A new life in Christ. Yes. In everything yes. that is in our Father's house is available to us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, we have to get some of that business uh, out of the way because this is not an evangelical message. Right. This is a message to the church. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is for those who are following after God. Come on. Amen. For those who are in Christ, praying is an ongoing conversation with God, our Father in Heaven. Yes. But yes. here's the fun part. Our Father in Heaven is right here with us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There it is now. Yes. Therefore, no separation. Yeah. Right. Paul said in Romans, I'm convinced. Yes. That nothing yeah. can separate us from the yeah. love of God. Yes. Yeah. Once you're on the other side of the cross. Yeah, that's right. right. And you have to get to the other side of the cross. Mark 1, verse 35. Jesus got up early in the morning while it was still dark and went out to a quiet place to pray. Yes. You're going to go through stuff in your life. You know how you deal with that stuff in your life? You get up early while everyone else is snoring. And you go find that quiet little place and you go, here I am, Lord. And you, sometimes you're, you're, you have things that you go through your, your list of things that you have going on for your week and your month and your whatever. But then you get to that place where it's quiet. And then you can start... You know, I, I like the story of Elijah. He was, uh, he just had a, a great episode and he beat up the, the, the priests of Baal and made fun of them and mocked them and then showed them who the God of Israel really was. And then Jezebel said, I'm going to go kill you, boy. If you live by tomorrow, then, you know, something's wrong. And so he ran off and hid in a cave. And the Lord came up a great windstorm, then a great firestorm, then a great earthquake. But Elijah was going, the Lord's not in any of that. Wow. Then he heard a still small voice. And he covered himself. And he was in the presence of the Lord. Yes. It's in those times of quiet prayer. When it's a still small voice. Now can God rock your world? Absolutely. He went, light be, and an entire universe filled up with light. Yes. I, you know, that crazy new, really fancy telescope they have out there. They've already pointed it at a dark spot. And let's see the edge of the universe. Yeah. They found more galaxies. Yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. They're exactly. like, oh, well, this is a big place. Yeah. Yeah. There's always more. And if God wanted to rock your world, he could do that. He does. David in the Psalms, he said, the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, yes. If he wanted to mess your theology up, he could certainly do that. Yeah. Yes, he could. <laughs> but he actually loves you as his sons and daughters. Amen. And sometimes you just want to sit there. And I don't know if you've ever done this and just sat on the couch with your child under your arm and just, you're not talking about anything. You're just, you might even watch watching the cartoons or whatever with your kid. You're just quiet time with your kid. Yes. That's all sometimes he wants. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I remember him saying at one time, I miss my time with you. Amen. We need to have make sure we have time yes. with him. Amen. And not, to, you know, for those of, who are called in fivefold ministry, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and, you know, sometimes we get so busy doing for the Lord, we forget that we're supposed to be hanging out with the Lord. 
around there. Uh, someone needed to hear that. If, yeah. if you did, if it was you, go oh me. Oh me. <laughs> Consecration. In Leviticus 11.44 says, Be holy even as God is holy. And holy doesn't mean that you've got holes in your shirt. It means that you're actually whole with Him. There's nothing missing, nothing broken. And you're just whole. I don't have any gaps. I don't have any cracks. That's right. Be holy, be pure, even as He is holy and pure. I don't know. Pastor Dave, that's a little high bar right there. And yes, it is. But because the only way you can reach that bar is with God. Amen. Amen. And this whole life Amen. is, uh, if you ever wondered why you have all these problems and you can't quite make it on your own from day to day or even moment to moment, oh. it was intentional. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Oh, let me mess with your theology. Amen. Oh, well, God wouldn't do that. He's a loving God. No, but he would do that Amen. because he wants you to realize that you can't make it through this life without Him. Amen. That's right. Amen. So get consecrated. Amen. Get separated yeah. from... You might have to fast your phone. Yeah. Come on. Who am I talking to? Hello. You might have to fast your tablet. Ooh, yes. Ooh. You might have to grab that remote. Or oh, the remote's probably still in your hand. <laughs> Hit that little red button that says off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> get separated. Yeah. Now, am I saying that you need to go make a conclave and build a wall and us you know, the world out there and we're just a thing for God right in here? No. Because God said actually to go out into the world. Yeah. Amen. We're in the world, we're not of the world. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Yep. Amen. First Peter 1, 15 and 17. He who called you is holy, so you be holy in all manner of conversation. Oh me. Amen. Amen. Yes, oh me. Have you ever said some things, like, you know, someone cut you off in traffic and, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> mm -hmm. or, well, I'll never do that. It'll never happen with me, you know. You turn around there. You gotta shut your mouth. Right. <laughs> whatever is holy, whatever is just, whatever is noble, let that be your speech. Yeah, I mean. Because, God said you're more than a conqueror. Yes. God's opinion of you is that you're an overcomer. Yes. Yeah. With one exception. You have to be in Christ. You have to be with God. Otherwise, you'll do really well at coming short. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Come out from them and be separate, says yes. the Lord. Amen. That means your lifestyle is different. When all your buds want to go uh, see this certain movie, you go, mm, no, that's, that's not going to work for me. Or if everybody's on a, one of those paid uh, television programs, you get off of the internet and everyone's going, ooh, you, have you seen this this movie or this series that's it's all about the, you know, this, this, that, and the other thing? And you go, yeah, what's it about? Well, it, it starts going off of this, and it's, what they describe for you is, uh, a theology where there is no God. Right. Where there's magic, where there's witchcraft. Yeah. No. Where there's mankind doing whatever they want to do. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, selfishly, they kill someone because, well, you got in my way. Wow. And I'm like, well, you know, that's really not the Bible. That's, yeah, never, that's right. not who God is. Because if God was like that, none of us would be here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It'd be a very small conversation. Amen. Amen. I hope someone's getting this. Yeah. <clears throat> Preparation. Luke 1, 1 through 4. And it boil it down to this. That you may know with certainty the things you have been taught. Wow. You've got to be prepared. Ooh. I like how Luke put that together. And he starts off and he says, you know, everyone's been writing the gospel. This is, or this is the Rogers translation. You know, like the Rogers paraphrase. <laughs> Everybody's writing the gospel, so it seemed good to me to go ahead and do one myself. But since I was there from the beginning, and I talked to everybody who was there from the beginning, we compiled all this together. And, you know, it says they always translate it Theophilus. And that was them being religious. Because in the Greek, Theophilus means friend of God. So when Paul, when Luke was actually writing this, he was going, I'm doing all of this so to your benefit, friend of God. 
And who's a friend of God? Anyone who's received Jesus. Right. So Luke has put all this together so that we would know with certainty those things that we've been taught. It's no, no longer a guess, because some of those, you know, if you are a, a Bible scholar and you are a, someone of a theologian, you start doing the research, and, and there were some other Gospels out there. Yeah. And, you know, Gospel is the Greek word for good news. That's why it's uangros, and it just means good messenger. Well, a lot of people had some good messages, yeah. and they were feel-good messages because they were lies. It made you feel good. They were just coming yes. up with stuff. But yes. It's not things that Jesus said or did. Right. It's not things that God said we should do. Right. And so, uh, yeah, there's a gospel of Mary. There's a gospel of Thomas. There's a gospel of uh, Enoch. There's a. I'm sure there's probably a their version of a gospel of Job. <laughs> but it's all made up stories because they wanted to. Be, I want to be like you know those apostles. It's like Simon the Magician. It's like, yeah. ooh, you guys got power. Well, how much does it cost? Because I want some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wanted the fame. It's good. It's true. And that's I, what I know of human nature. Right. I've spent most of my life actually studying anthropology, not theology. Just yeah. studying people. Mm -hmm. And from what I know of the norms in people's lives, they wrote their own gospel so that they go, oh yeah, this is the gospel. I'm sorry, I went to a little southern... Preacher on the end. I don't know where that was from. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3 16. The word is good for teaching, for convicting, for correcting, and for instruction. So this is all part of being in preparation. Amen? Amen. Now here's a hard one patience. Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. Yeah, now. Right. <laughs> No, James 1, 4. Let patience have its perfect work that you would be perfect, not lacking anything. Amen. Yep. I love it. Mark 12, 31. In Galatians 5, 14, they say the same thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if you're going to be patient with someone, you need to love them. Well, how should I love them? Love them the same way God loves you. Well, how does God love me? And that lovely Greek word, agape. Sometimes it's agapeo. Mm -hmm. And what it really means, in, in, in Greek, there's like, depending on your how you study it out, five or seven different ways of saying I love you in yeah. Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one that's the most devastating is agape. Now, when Jesus was restoring Peter and they're having that uh, fish breakfast there on the, on the coast, this is after the crucifixion and the resurrection, and, and Peter's there, and, and the Lord says, yes. Simon Peter, do you love me? You know, in English, it goes three times. Do you love me? And Peter says, yes, yes, yes. But what he was actually saying, if you go to the Greek, it's that first time, was, Simon Peter, do you agape me? Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Do you love me without any uh, hope or thought of getting a return? You just love me because I'm out there, because I am. And you, you're getting nothing out of this, but you're just loving me. And Peter goes, yeah. And he goes, okay, feed my sheep. And he goes, Peter, do you love me? Do you agape me? And Peter goes, yeah. And feed my sheep. Peter, so, come on, do you, do you even love me as a friend? Because that third one was phileo means friend, brotherly love. Yes. Am I even like a brother to you? Yes. Oh, and he goes, oh Lord, you know all things. Yeah. Feed my lambs. Yeah. What he was doing was restoring those three times Peter had said, I don't even know the man, blankety blank, blank, blank. Right. And then the, the rooster crows and yeah. he looks over across the court and sees Jesus and I'm sure you know, some of the, the movies about this gets it right, I think, because Jesus looked across and saw Simon Peter and told you. Without, you know, without even saying, I told you so. Yeah. Right. right. And Peter wept bitter tears. So he's getting restored here. We have to learn how to be patient and love our neighbor even as God loves us. Is it going to be difficult? You betcha. Are they going to do things that you don't want them to do? You betcha. Are you going to have to love them anyway? Yeah. You betcha. 
Yes. Because, you know, this is one of those, he without sin cast the first stone. Right. That's one of those moments because, you know, the Lord ruined me because uh, I had done so many things and he said he loved me. And then some people would do something and then I would go to the Lord like, Lord, I just want to talk to on. And I've got training to do it. And he goes, did I do that to you? Would I do that to you? I have to, I've come to love everyone as the Lord loves everyone. Which freaks some people out because like, well, you know, offenses come. I'm going to offend you, you know, I'm going to do something to try to, I have people try to offend me. I'm like, you can't do it. <laughs> One, I've been there, done that. Two, the love of God constrains me. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we get patience. Now we get long suffering. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love suffers long. What does that mean? A long time. Oh, what was it? You know, five minutes? I, can, I probably do five minutes. No. Right. How about five years? Yeah. How about 40 years? How about all your life? Because that's how much God loved us. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Yes. I hope you're getting something from this. Yes. God loves, love as God loves you. Be patient and long-suffering as God is patient and long-suffering with you. And I know that I have tried his patience more than once. Mm -hmm. But he loved me anyway. You know, when they start showing up, and they will start showing up, don't give them rules. No rules. Help them make relationships. Yes. One, do not remake them into the image and likeness of your religion. Yeah. Right. I just stepped on some toes. What do you mean, my religion? I'm supposed to be a Christian, aren't I? Well, there's a difference between Christian and like Christ. Right? Yes, Jesus. Because in Europe and North America, to make someone Christian is, you know, you've got to get a haircut, you've got to wear the right suit, you got to no. get uh, consecration, you got to wear the, the certain clothes, you got to... Who said? <laughs> that's what religion has done for us. No, no. I don't want people made in the image and likeness of religion. I don't care what brand you put on it. Yeah. Right. It could be uh, non-denomination. It could be interdenomination. It could be all, any of the famous names that we could all name. But if we're failing to make them like Christ, then we failed them. Right. Amen. Oh, me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they come, don't give them rules. Don't make them in your image and likeness of your religion. Right. Make them in the image and likeness of Christ. Because right. mm -hmm. we're made in the image and likeness of God. Help them work out their salvation. You know, when we get saved, there's no, there's no price tag. We go to the cross, we receive the cross, and the price paid there, and we receive salvation. You know, when I became a full-time Christian, I still smoked, I still swore, I still looked like everyone else in the world. Right. And I had to work out my salvation yep, and prefer right. the Lord and, and get yes. some of that stuff off of me. Yes, yes. And He took it out of me. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes. Thank so you. So I, I don't do any of those things, not because I I have great discipline, went through a 12 step program. No, I got delivered. Yes, I got delivered. It's, it's not a part of my life. You know what is right. part of my life? Him. Yes, yes. I prefer yes. Him. Romans 12, 2. Not conform to this world, but be transformed yes. by God. Amen. Let the Bible change you. Amen. Well, that's just a book written by men. Nope. Uh, here's how to end the arguments. Agree with them. That is correct. Yeah. It was a human man with the stylus and some ink in his hand going scribble, scribble, scribble. Yeah. But it was God going, this is what I want you to write. Yes. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible, in books of theology, it is like the, the worst example of what you want to do for religion because it talks about all the bad things that people did. But it's, it's a testimony of what God, how much God loves us. 
It's really a love letter. Yes. And he said, look, this is what will happen to you if you walk right with me. This is what will happen to you if you don't walk right with me. And it's all in there. Mm -hmm. And here are the examples of people's lives who did right and who did wrong. And yeah. sometimes it was the same person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such is God's grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are not to make people into our image and likeness. We are to show them God and show who they are supposed to be. Philippians 2.12, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Number one, know that you are not God. Amen. There are so many people right. who, you know, I'm all that in a pack of chips. And no, you're not. Now, one of the my perspectives that uh, I had a conversation with the Lord, it was about Lucifer. And they talk about Lucifer in, uh, I believe it's Isaiah, where he'll ascend the mountain of the north and he will be like the most high God. He'll sit in the seat of the assembly and he'll be like God. Well, well Lucifer God. discovered that God was bigger than the mountain. Yeah. And then Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning yeah. and hit the earth. Yeah. You know me, I just kind of joke around that big crater in Arizona. That's where he landed. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Bible proof of that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let God by his Holy Spirit change them from faith to faith from glory to glory Ephesians 5.26 made holy by the washing of the water of the word so you let that Bible change you and you have to be in that word not from the standpoint of I'm learning this religious text which some have done but if you go over it and as a conversation from the God of creation, the God who made us in his image and likeness. If we go over that as a letter written to us, as a conversation with us, it changes us. Amen. And we get washed with the water of the word. Yes. And it starts to renew our minds, renew our spirits. And, and all of a sudden we find the things that we used to do. I remember uh, when I became full-time with the Lord, I have to tell people, there's part-time and full-time. Part-time Christians, they're CEO Christians. Christmas, Easter only. Oh. But full time, I said, well, I'm, I'm full disposal now with the Lord and all that stuff is before is gone. And I remember I was working for a, uh, an international firm in this particular uh, testing facility. And one of the guys I worked with, he was ex-military, I'm ex-military. He said, you know, the, the guys you used to work with in your shop, do you think they would say that you've changed? And I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> when I was in the Navy, I helped create that uh, stereotype of a sailor. Uh -huh. I'm just going to leave it right there. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, I will tell you one thing. It's slightly political, but it was Ronald Reagan in the 80s. He said Congress was spending money like drunken sailors. And he said, oh, I've got to apologize to the sailors. At least they were spending their own money. <laughs> Very good. Ronald Reagan was hilarious. Yes, yeah. he was. <laughs> we need to make room for these people that are coming. We need to make room for them in our lives. So when strangers show up, we need to go greet them, like family member that we haven't seen in forever. Because, well, they're a family member we haven't seen in forever. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We need them in our. We need to make room for them in our ministries. These people are coming from the world. They don't know what it's like to be in church. They don't know what it's like to be a greeter at the door. They don't know what it's like to be uh, directing traffic in the parking lot. They don't know what it's like to actually serve communion. They don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. They're new. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I, you know, I used to go to church without a job. That doesn't mean anything. They're new. Mm -hmm. They're trying to. They have to learn what it's like to be in Christ. Yeah. We need to make room for them in our communities. Yes. When these people start coming in, we need to take them to lunch. Yes. Yes. We need to relive that first part of Acts where they were going from house to house, yes. breaking bread, and Amen. continuing in the doctrine of the apostles. Yes. What does that mean? Well, we show up and say, hey, we're having dinner over our house. Come over to our house and have dinner. Yeah. 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 Hey, we're going over to such and such restaurant. We want you to come along. And they, they come along, and if you can afford it, you, you go, hey, no, 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 I got this. I just wanted to bless you guys. And they go, what does that blessed stuff mean? It just means I want you to feel good about... Yeah, exactly. I just, I, this, is, this is no compulsion for you. 
that we need to involve them in our communities. Yes. Right. Matthew 19. Suffer the little ones to come to me. Some of them are going to be like little children. Some of them are going to be little children. But they will not know anything. Some of them will stand outside the front door and smoke cigarettes. That's and some people will go, <coughs> don't you know you're supposed to not smoke around? That's yeah. They'll not actually reject them. That's right. You know, I was deliberate of cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, you know, I was the guy I was trying to, you know, here's the funny thing about people who smoke cigarettes. You're the only one that doesn't think you smell like smoke. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Everyone else goes, Woo! Yeah. yeah. And I was such a connoisseur, I could tell, yeah, that was a Winston. What? Yes. That was a Marlboro. <laughs> But, you know, we have to love them anyway. You know, as we start ministering to some of the transient population, they're going to smell like that prodigal son coming back from the pig farm. That's you know, right. Mm -hmm. well, one of the first ministry things we're going to do for you, brother, is going to give you, give you some fresh clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we're, going to, we're going to take care of them. We're going to love them. Right. I freak out our, our religious people uh, in Montgomery. I hug the necks of these guys and gals who are from the streets. Yes. And so aren't you afraid of, like, no, what's on me is going to actually kill anything that tries to jump on me. So. Yes. Amen. But I'm going to bless Amen. them. That's right. Because, you know, some of the reasons why these folks are on the street is nobody loves them. They don't have anyone feeding back into their life. Yep. No one loves them for real. They want, you know, they're getting love for what they can do or what they can get. Or they can feel good about themselves, almost twisting their arm off, patting themselves on the back. I was nice to a street person. No, I want to go hand up, not hand out. That's right. right. Get the, their lives changed. And Amen. Let them become ministers. Oh, yes. In the lifestyle that they come out of. Amen. And there are different right. lifestyles. And we want them all delivered. Amen. So they can yes. flip around. Yes. <clears throat> I've known people in other major cities, their ministry is actually to the men and women in these strip clubs. Yes. And what do you mean, brother? Oh, you're just talking some stuff there. No. no, no, no. They came out of it. Yep. They know and they got that. Jesus in their life. Yes. And they said, you know what? I've got sisters in there that are, they need Jesus. Yes. People are going, I've got brothers in there that need Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going back and ministering. Yes. Now they're not getting saved and turning right around next weekend and going. They're getting built up and encouraged. They're getting right. their lives changed. And then they're going. Yes. Out. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Little by little. Mark 3, 35. Whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, my mother. Those who choose God, choose them. Even if they're rough. Because at some point, God's going to make them into His image of likeness. Ephesians 4, 13, until we all come into the unity of faith. Right? At one point in our lives, we're going to reflect Him. Yes. And at one point in our lives, any one of us can be walking down the street and say, tell me about Jesus. If there's something about you, I, just, I know you know about Jesus. Or they're going to go, I saw you praying. I'm just, if I just touch him or touch her on the shoulder, that'll be enough. And the Lord will do something for me like he did for them. Amen. Whew. Well, Amen. That, that's not right. That's not possible. Jesus said the freakiest thing in the world. <laughs> He said, you see the things I'm doing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You'll do those things in greater but yeah. I go to the Father. Amen. Yeah. Why not? Jesus laid hands on, healed the sick, sent the word, healed the sick. Yes. They could take pieces of cloth. And God, Paul, we know what you've got on you, and God's blessed you, we're just going to do that. And then we're going to go over here, and people are going to get healed, because Yes. The God on you yes. is going to get on them. Yes. Woo! Yes. Come on. Y'all yes. ready for that? Yes. Yeah. Lester, Celine, you ready for someone to walk up? Yeah. I, I got my hanky. I got my scarf. That's I, right. Oh, yeah. Come here, Uncle Bubba. That's right. You're going to get healed. Yeah. Why not? That's right. Why not? Amen. And or they're going to say, this guy is up here. I can't get close to him because there's too many people around him. Oh, there's a shadow. Woo, yes. yes. Come on, hallelujah. That's enough. And God's going right. to hit me. Boom. Woo, yes. Or you're going to be, I lock someone and you're going to go, 
be healed. And all of a sudden that word was sent, and the Lord yes. Jesus is over here going, yes. yes. And God goes, done. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And all of a sudden they fall over. No one touched them. That's right. And they were like, what's going on? I don't know, but he hasn't. It's been two hours, but he hasn't stopped speaking in tongues. Well, that's yes. good because he used to be mute. Woo! <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes. God's going to mess with your world. I love it. Come on. Are you ready for God to mess with your world? Yes. Yes. Acts 11, 21, 26. The Lord was with them. The Lord encouraged them to continue. And the church assembled and taught a great many people. The disciples were first called Christian in Antioch. Yes. Now, what I know of people, people kind, anthropology, that was probably a slur. That was a, making fun of them. Right. They were preaching Christus yeah, yeah. and him crucified. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, you just guys. And funny story. As a, a, a youth evangelist that I started listening to probably 20, 25 years ago, Eastman Curtis. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. But when he got saved as a teenager, his parents, his mom especially, was adamantly opposed to anything church, anything having to do with that religious stuff. Yeah. And he would go into his room and he would tell his mom, try to share with her this joy that he found about Jesus. She said, go to your room, no dinner. I'm not going to hear you. And so he'd go into his room and he'd just start praying, Lord, touch my mom. Yeah. And he just believed in God. She opens up the door and says, I'm tired of hearing you talk about this. What are you trying to be like, Jesus? And yes. he goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened in Antioch. Are you trying to be like Jesus as Christian? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why not? Yes. I, that's what Jesus said, that Amen. we should reflect his glory. Yes. Right? Yeah. So why not? Yes, thank you. You know, the only one who can call you Christian is someone else. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Christian. Are you sure? Yeah. That's like right. telling someone, I'm humble. <laughs> <laughs> On stage with a microphone. Yeah. I'm humble. Yeah. No. It's them looking at your life. People should be able to know that you're a Christian without even you yes. giving them a single verse. You know, you don't break out your Bible, stand on a corner, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, turn or burn. No, that, that, that's actually going to turn people away. That's right. Come on. Right. Yes. But if you can sure stand on that corner and watch everyone come by, and like, Lord, touch them. Yeah, touch them. I'm just saying. Lord Jesus. Love. Touch them. I remember working in a mall at a, a Christian video store, a little kiosk. And I'm praying for everyone that came by. And I'm just like, Lord, bless this business. You know, it's, it's great stories. And, and I would watch people come by and I'm just praying for them. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not out loud. I'm not jumping up and I'm not very Pentecostal. I'm over here. I'm trying to sell stuff. Because, you know, you sell stuff, you make money, right? That's right. <laughs> and I'm trying to sell. But I have people walk up to me. And one of them goes, like a young lady at a store across the, the court from where I was. She came by and like, I'm getting married next week. Would you pray for me? Yeah. I didn't say I did. I had not said Jesus out loud to anybody. And then uh, the same lady, a little while later, said, we prayed that thing away. And it was one of those, you know, remember back when crystals were very popular? Yes. They still are. Oh, are they? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, she said, we prayed that, that store away. And that little kiosk that had all the crystals for sale and the New Ager stuff is gone. Oh, and yeah. I, I'm like, I, I didn't know it. I'm just over here going, Lord, bless all these yes, people around me. Yes. And then I had <laughs> witches. Witches are real. Yes, they are. Sure. They, yes, they don't they have are. pointy noses and pointy hats. No, that's right. And they try to curse you. And I, yeah. I won't go into any of my background, but I can recognize what's going on. And I would have them head toward me, and they make a big loop. <laughs> and they go that way, yeah. so they wouldn't come near me. I had one walk by, and she threw her jacket off of her back, and on her 
her, the back of her t-shirt was a curse, trying to curse me, and I was like, Lord Jesus, touch her. Yeah, amen. That's right. You know, <laughs> they, they, they have, right there. <laughs> they chase after power and That's control. Right. That's right. But what they don't understand is you are united with he who is power. Come on. Amen. Amen. He who has control. Amen. Right. So it, the devil and all his little bully boys, you just go kill them. Yeah. Amen. Make them separate from those demons yeah. that, that they're trying to have part of their life. Yeah. Absolutely. Fight back. Mm -hmm. You know how we fight back? We love them. Amen. Yes. We don't make war. No. Amen? Amen. Do you, you get anything out of that? Absolutely. Yeah. You ready for the other word? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got another one? Come on. That, that was that was word one. That was that was actually word two of the of the set. What's this two? So this one uh, is beyond the cross. This is the real word that I came to deliver, but the Lord wanted, someone needed to hear that today, so I had to share it. Okay. Amen? Yes. Beyond the cross. This is for the church. This is not for the world. I want the world to hear it, though, because I want them to be jealous. But beyond the cross. There are three things we must have. Repentance of sin. Acceptance of forgiveness by Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. And the third thing, a new life with God, the God of the Bible. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We have to get beyond the cross. First, we have to believe God of the Bible is who He says He is. Before right. He can go anywhere. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, yes. and Jesus. Amen. He is who He says He is. You know, there are some people out there that will say, well, there are many paths to God. You know how to end that argument? You go, yes, there is. But there is only one way that will get you all the way to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He said, narrow is the way to life. Broad is the way to destruction. So when they argue with you and they go, well, you know, there are many paths. There are many truths. That's your truth. You go, well, it's true. Well, my truth is this. It's like, okay, that's your truth. But your truth will only get you so far. There's a chasm you can't cross. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And Jesus is the only way to get there. Yes. Jesus said, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. He who is in me will live. You can't get, I mean, let's, let's go horticulture here. If you take a branch off of a tree, it will be green for a little while, but then it, it withers and dies because it has no life going into it. Right. You have to actually scar the vine. Someone's going to catch this. You have to scar the vine, plug the branch yes. into it, and yes. then Graft it in. strap it. Yes. Right. Give it some stripes. Yes. yes. That's right. And then be plugged in. So that, that branch begins to have new life. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Someone's going to get that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Genesis 1.26. This is something we need to grab a hold of. Once we realize and acknowledge that the God of the Bible is who he says he is, here's some hard stuff for us to grab a hold of, especially when our theology has been, oh, wicked me, a sinner, there is no hope. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Man there means Adam. It talks about humans. Mm -hmm. In our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, and over all of the earth, and over every <laughs> creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Yes, ladies, you uh, made in the image and given power over creeps. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. You were made like him. Amen. There's only two versions of human, male, male. female, A, Amen. B, yeah. that's it, That's right. there are no other options. And some people, if someone needs to hear this, your psychology does not change your biology. Come on, that's right. right. Yes. That's all I'm going to say about that. Thank you, Lord. 
Genesis 3, 6 and 7. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. What happened there? God told Adam, yeah. take care of everything. Eat of any of these seed-bearing fruits. You're good. Just this one tree, don't eat of it. And the day that you eat of it, you'll know good and evil and you'll die. He told that to Eve. Right. At that time, actually, she was still known as female Adam. Because right. <clears throat> Adam was Adam, male, Adam, female. Right. They were one. They didn't know the difference. And then Eve gets deceived. And Satan has used the same trick since then. Did God say? Is that what he meant? Sorry. If you create question. They did what they were told not to do. They became naked because they were no longer covered by God. That's right. God told them, or asked them, who told you you were naked? They discovered that they were no longer covered by the presence of the Lord. And they heard the Lord moving through the garden in Eden and were afraid. You know, before, when God was moving through the garden in Eden, they didn't know, they didn't really hear Him coming because they were in Him. They lived and moved and had their being in the presence of the Lord. Someone's going to get excited here in a moment. Okay, we'll get ready. Repent. Yes. <clears throat> Repent. Uh, is it means to feel pain and sorrow or regret. That's that word repent itself. It means sorrow for something done or spoken. To repent that we have lost much time in idleness or sensual pleasure. To repent that we have injured or wounded the feelings of a friend. A person repents only of what he himself has done or said. I feel sorry about this. I don't want to do this again. To express sorrow for something past. And I got that from Webster's Dictionary, the 1828 version. Yeah. I like that version because it ha yep. has scriptural reference on almost every definition. Wow. Yep. But in looking in the Greek word, matineo. And the Greek word matineo means to think differently mm -hmm. or afterwards. That is, reconsider. That's where they get that repent means to turn around. Because that's what... Think about what you just did. Do you like doing that? No. Okay, don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Not to now. Yeah. Yeah. Second, we have to believe that Jesus was and is the anointed salvation of God. And that the price of the cross was enough to cover your sin and permit you to have a life with the God of the Bible. Amen? That's right. We have to go there. In Jesus' name meant salvation of God. Yahoshua. Salvation, yeah. Yes. And, you know, yes. his friends called him Yeshua. It's like calling him someone Josh. Yeah. It's, that's the same thing. It's the salvation of God. Mm -hmm. Were there a lot of Joshua's in the, the time oh, yeah. that Jesus was around? Yeah, it was a popular name. Joshua was a cool guy. There was even a, a priest named Joshua. Salvation of God. Absolutely. That's a good name. But he was the only one anointed to be the salvation. There's a difference. They went to John the Baptist era at the, the Jordan, and John goes, Look, I should be, you should be baptizing me, not me, you. Mm -hmm. And that was Jesus saying, No, no, no. This is the way it's supposed to be. Because yeah. we go back into Numbers, it said, Have I said, will I not do? Am I the Son of Man that I should repent? So, go all the way down to Jesus repenting for when he didn't need to repent. Because he was holy, he was jealous, he was God. He was Emmanuel, God with them. Man, you can go on just on that piece right there. That'll get you excited. Amen. And I love the conversation. It was uh, Nathaniel and Thomas, I think. Uh, and they're going like, you know, who's going to sit on your right hand? Who's going to sit on your left hand? And, and he's going, well, whoever's the, the servant of the most, it's allotted to whoever it's allotted to. And then he goes, well, just show us the Father, and then we'll know. And he goes, 
how long have I have to be with you guys? Have you yes. not heard anything I've been saying? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's the Rogers translation, but you get it. And he said, if you see me, you see the Father. How many times did they have to mention and look up in their copy of the Talmud and the Torah and the Law and the Prophets and, and go, look, Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And he messed with their theology. He said, before Abraham was, I am. What you talking about? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Beyond the cross, beyond the grave. The fun stuff really starts beyond the cross and beyond the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew 28, 10, Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Proof of life. That's what he was saying. Go tell them. I'm going to show up. The grave could not hold him. Amen. He who was and is life. Yeah. Let me paint a, a visual picture for you. <clears throat> it's Passover, the day before Passover, actually. And uh, they just took him through uh, to the Sanhedrin at night. Under cover of darkness. Yeah. And then they took him over to Pilate. And Pilate said, no, it's not my problem. It's Herod's problem. Took him over to Herod. And Herod goes, do some tricks for us, Jesus. No? Okay, just mark him well. Hit him with a stick. Boom, boom, boom. Put a crown on him. Put my robe on him. All right, there's your king of the Jews. Send him back to Pilate. And Pilate goes, I don't find any fault in this guy. He said, and he looks at, you know, as the Praetorian captain. He said, who's the worst guy we got in prison right now? Barabbas. What did he do? Oh, he's a murderer and a seditionist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be good. No one will let him. And they bring him up. It's like, look, this is Passover. So that's the thing that we do. We're just trying to be nice Romans. You can have your choice of which prisoner we're going to get. We're going to release someone from prison. We get Jesus, in whom I don't find any fault. And we have Barabbas, who's a murderer, seditionist. He's a troublemaker, rebel rouser. Which one do you want? Give us Barabbas. What are you talking about? Yeah. And Barabbas means... Son of the Father. Mm -hmm. So they were going for the Son of the Father instead of the Son of Salvation. Amen. And then he goes, gets 39 flashes with a Roman scourge, carries the cross as far as he can, and then just gets uh, carried all the way up. Then he goes to the cross, hangs there, and a healthy person could be on that cross for three days. And he was there for only three hours. And it gets to the end of it. And all these things, everyone that you hoped and trust to be with you, none of them were. And toward the end, Mary and John the Beloved show up, because they have to probably sneak in. So, you know, because they don't want to get in trouble with the Romans or the Sanhedrin guard. And Jesus looks down and is like, John, there's your mom. Mom, there's your son. And he says all these things. And then he gets to the end of it and he goes, it is finished. And he gave up the spirit. And he died. Now we need to go to the cross and take our sin, our shame, our difficulties, all that junk that keeps us separate from God and put it at the foot of the cross. And go, look, this is all I have. Because at the foot of the cross when Jesus said, it is finished, he took his holy, righteous life and said, give it to them. So we can go to the foot of the cross and go, this is all I have. And he goes, great. That's all I want. Amen. And we go to the foot of the cross and he goes, here's my life. And he, we go, I don't deserve it. He goes, I don't. Take it anyway. I did it for you. And said, oh, wow, this is great. And then he took him down because Passover, the, which was the ceremony, the, the uh, feast where they had put the blood of a lamb on the lentils, the doorposts mm -hmm. in Egypt. And wherever they, the house was covered by the blood, the angel of death passed over. Yeah. And here it is. Jesus giving us his blood as a sacrifice. If we put his blood over the lentils of our heart, yeah. the you. judgment of death passes over. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, that, that person is still dirty with sin. And God will look at them and go, what's sin? 
Thank you. Lord. As far as the east is from the west, I don't remember that. Thank you. Thank you. I remember being in prayer one time as a, when I'm getting full time and my life is getting changed and, and I'm praying and I'm on my knees and I'm talking to the Lord and I'm like, I did this, I did that, I did the other thing. How can you even? And I did this and oh Lord, forgive me, a sinner. And He goes, Stop it. Like, Did you ever have the Lord do that to you? Yes. Like, yes. Stop it. Yes. I'm like what? Put the bricks. And he said, I'm tired of hearing it. I have forgiven you. That's right. I don't want to remember it anymore. Yep. I'm like, okay. Yep. Well, I'm not going to bring it up right. anymore. <laughs> and I, I rarely talk about it. if I do have anything come to mind because the devil's good about that. You used to do this. Oh, You're yeah. just this. And you yes, know, oh, I will go, yes, I was. I yeah. used to do that. But yes. praise God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the longer part of my life. That's right. Amen. And then we get to the grave. There, we were on earth. We're mourning. And in Jerusalem at the time, they were going, oh, look what has happened. Oh, look what has happened. Oh, woe is me. And, and our Messiah, whom we love, Jesus, our teacher, he's gone from us. But you know what was happening in the grave? Life showed up in the midst of death. Yeah. Yeah. Death, where's your victory? Grave? Yes. Yeah. Okay, get yeah. that backwards. Grave, where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? Life showed up. It took captivity captive. Yeah. And the Roman way of doing things, though, and kings of that period, is when they went in there and they conquered conquered someone, they took the leadership into chains and they walked them back to their capital and they presented them as a trophy to their king or their Caesar. They said, look, we just conquered them. And that's what happened to kings of uh, Jerusalem and of Israel. They got put in chains and taken back to Babylon. Walked all that way so they could be a trophy to that other king. Well, Jesus is in the grave doing that. It's actually a time of rejoicing. And then people were going, you know what? Didn't we just bury Uncle Bob yesterday? Uncle Bob's walking around the streets of Jerusalem going, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God, yes, the Messiah amen. has come. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. People were freaking out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So the grave was actually not a bad thing. Yeah. But I, so many preachers have said, but Sunday's coming. When he came up out of the grave and refilled his body, he was so overflowing with life that he was changed. And, you know, they ran down there, Mary, and, and then they're looking at the, the other Marys are there with her, and they're, they were going to take care of the body appropriately because they didn't have time before Passover. And they're, and they're weeping, and they're like, hey, the stone is gone, and Jesus is gone. What did you do with the body? And they saw, Mary saw someone and said, hey, look, that's probably the gardener. What did you do with the body? I can just give it to him. You know, we'll, we're not going to say anything. We're no, no judgment here. We just want to take care of the body. And he goes, Mary, have you ever had Jesus call your name? Yes. yes. You know it immediately. Yes. David. Yes, sir. Mary, it's me. It's and she probably ran to, to hug him and be at his feet like she's, she was famous for before, washing his feet with her tears. Right. And he said, oh, no, no, don't touch me yet. Because I'm sanctified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. i got to go to the to heaven and put the blood of the mercy seat that sacrifice once for all. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? So we can rejoice. We're getting to the other side of the cross. Now we get to the other side of the cross. What has been given to us? And we have it in the parable of the prodigal son. You know, we know about Pig Boy. He was lying. He's the one who said, Dad, you're dead to me. I want my money. And I'm going to go live the life I want to live. Right. And Dad, being a loving father, said, okay. But when the, the, the friends ran out at the same time the money did, and then he found himself serving pigs, then he came to himself and was like, look, Oh, even servants in my father's house get treated better than this. I can go be a servant in my father's house. And he gets back to his father's house, and while he was a long way off, the father saw him and ran to him. That means the father was always looking for him. Knew that one day he would come back. 
Yes, Lord. A long way off and saw me. Ran to him. Oh. Said, good, fresh clothes, fresh shoes. Put a ring on his finger. And a ring on his finger meant that he could get anything. Right. Whatever. On, and the family enterprise was the collateral. So, if, you know, if, I, if we needed a ten head of cattle, boom, it's done. Mm -hmm. Whatever we needed. And he just, that made him family again. He's no longer separate. So the brother in the field, the other brother, who never left, he sees, you know, hey, look, they pulled the fatted calf. They're going to have a party. And, Dad, what's going on? You didn't even give me a goat. I've been here the whole time. Yeah. And he said, look, your brother who was dead is now alive. Amen. Let's celebrate yeah. that. Yeah. And your yeah. son, this is, this is where I want you to go to. This is where I want you to get, Don't get anything at all. Get this. The father in that parable said to his son, everything in my house is yours. Amen. 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 That's where we need to be, beyond the cross. Because beyond the cross, we're now in a walking relationship with the father. That everything in our father's house is us, Amen. is ours. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Amen. I would have told you, if, you know, what's going to happen. But I'm going to go make a place for you. I'm going to make mansions when translation says mansions. Yeah. I'm not giving you a condo or a little teeny apartment. I'm not giving you a tiny home. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you mansions. Amen. 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 Yes. That's what we have coming to us. Wow. Get to the other side of the cross yeah. to resurrection and new life with the Father. Amen. Amen. Acts 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, another translation says, boom, the presence of God. Get to the other side of the cross. If you do not have the presence of God with you all the time, you're missing out. Amen. Yes. You should wake up going, hey, there you are. I feel your presence. Yes. You should go to bed going, all right, Lord, I'm going to go to sleep. You might be talking to me in my dreams, but I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to rest in you, Amen. and I'm going to rest. Yes, thank you. And you wake up, hey Lord, there you are. Wherever I go, I like David, he said, yes. where can I go that your spirit is not already there before me? Yes. Yes. That's getting to the other side of the cross. Yes. You, we are missing out if we're not walking in. If we just go to the cross and we, uh, you know, some denominations, that's all they teach. And I don't want to pick on denominations as much as I want us to get our theology squared away. Yeah, because if you get to the cross, you go, oh, wicked sinner that I am. I just believe you know, for my salvation that I'm missing out on judgment. Well, if you're just missing out on judgment, you know, that's a good thing, missing judgment. But if you're missing out on everything else, you're missing out. That's like going to a, a banquet table and you're sitting back from the table and you can't reach anything. Well, I didn't even know I could scoop my chair forward to get from this table. God wants to so bless us, his children, Amen. that we can't contain it. He told Malachi, go right down and tell them, look, if you just tithe, I know that you guys aren't doing the law. I know that you're not really following the Talmud or any of that stuff. Just, if I can just get you to tithe, see what I will do. I'll open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing on you. You can't contain it. That's right. Come on. Ooh, yes, and then some people right. will say, well, that's Old Testament. Uh, 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 uh. Read Hebrews 7 through 10. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that's all. You just do the research yourself. Yeah. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to walk with the Lord. We're going to receive all of yeah. His benefits. Yeah. And He said that we can be blessed going in. Well, I'm going to go in so I can be blessed. He said we're going to be blessed going out so I'm going to go out so I can be blessed. Amen. We're going to go in blessed in the city. I'm right. Blessed yeah. in Where the you go? field. Amen. Yeah. Blessed, yes. Yes. top only. Amen. Heads no. I win, tails I win. No, right. Heads right. I win. Okay. Yeah. I'm the head only, not the tail. Yeah. Right. Above only, not beneath. Amen. I'm the first, not the last. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because it works out that way. Yes. Amen. Because we're on the other side of the cross. Hagios, which is, comes as the Greek word meaning holy and sacred. Numa is the, means air or breath or pressure. When they talked about the Spirit of God showing up at Pentecost, that's what they talked about. The Hagios, Holy, Pneuma. And the difference is that Greek had two different words for air 
like that one suke, which kind of meant like life and who your being is, because they noticed that when you did not have breath in you, you were dead. Okay. And that this simple Greek logic. But uh, pneuma was different. Pneuma meant pressure. It meant like the wind, and you, when the wind is strong and it's blowing, and you feel pressure. Yeah. So this was the holy pressure or presence or weight of God. Amen. We can have that. Yes. We can walk in that. Yes. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is not an it. No, he's not. Yeah. Not a touch of God. Oh, I, I got a touch of the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm glad you did, but you're missing out. If, oh, if all you're going to get is a touch. Yeah. No, no, you're missing no. out. Yeah. Because I want His presence. I want Him to go. Come yes. Amen. Yes. And I liken it to being at the deep end of the pool. Me too. Yes. You can't touch bottom. You can't touch top. You can't touch the sides. Amen. You're just overwhelmed. Ooh, yes. By His presence. Amen. Right. Yes. Oh, let me have that. Let me have that. Amen. And you walk in the room, some people will freak out. You walk in the room, and they'll freak out because the presence of the Lord is with you, and you're messing with their demons. Yeah. Or they're, they're, you'll walk in the room, and they look like they got caught. You know that look. You know your kids used to give it to you all the time. Oh, you yeah. walk in the room, and you know that they were doing something because they were quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and you open the door, like, what you doing? Nothing. Yeah. You know how you walk in the room, you'll get that stare. And then some people say, what's different about you? Jesus. Yes. Well, what do you mean by that? You know, I've got Jesus. I've gone to church. It's like, yeah, but have you received Jesus? Yes. And have you gotten beyond the cross? Because, yes. you know, put the cross behind you and you walk in the presence of the Lord because that's what the price of the cross was all about. Yes. I want you to hear this that when you get beyond the cross, you're in the presence of the Lord. I fully expect that some of us. Yes. Some of us within sound of hearing or even watching on the video wherever it's shared across social media. Some of you are going to walk from this life into the next. And all we're going to see is a footprint on the other side. Because all the, hey, oh, look. Oh, and even the grass is alive. Amen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I just pray the Lord touches you, carries yeah. you to the other side. Yes. Amen. Amen. We can walk with God, the God of the Bible, and He will walk with us. It's no longer where in the Old Testament the Spirit of the Lord came upon them and they did some mighty deed. The Spirit of the Lord came upon them and they began to prophesy. The Spirit of the Lord came upon No. It's like King David crying out in Psalm 51. Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit yeah, from me. Yeah. I'm walking in your presence. Amen. I'm, it's not on me that I can you know, run through a troop, leap over a wall. No, it's us being there like, going, Lord, get those people saved. And yeah. you're agreeing with God, and God does amazing things. And that group, man. Like some of us, just walking over to the other side, boop. It's like, where was Lester? He was just here. And, uh, and Selene will go, he went with Jesus, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's the way it's going to be Amen. for some of us, Amen. for some of you. Someone just received that. Yes. Amen? Amen? Everything in our Father's house is ours. Everything. Healing, health, and wholeness. Amen. More money than you yeah. can spend. Come on. But you're not going to be greedy that way because it's more money than you can invest in the lives of others. Amen. 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 What's the Lord is stirring up in your spirit. What's the mission and the vision that God's given you? Yeah. Is it an orphanage? Is it a Bible school? Is it a hospital or a clinic? Is it a library? Is it reaching out to a specific people group? Well, you're in your father's house. Yeah. Lord, send me the resources. Because yes. there are some yes, and he does. walking around going, yes. Lord, you have blessed me significantly. I don't know what to do. I don't want to build a bigger silo. I've got enough silo. Right. But I need to find someone to bless. Yes. Who's going to be that person I need to bless? Amen. If I've got a mission and a vision that requires, you might also be, Lord, 
I need an investor because I've got this idea from you. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. And I know that when you breathe on this idea, we're going to have so many people yes. get employed. You're just going to blow it up. And this is an I think oh, a doodad that people are going to want and want again. Yes. I love it. You know, little bag clip things. There was a guy in Australia. He had a crazy idea to do a little spring-loaded clip because he got tired of opening up his bags and he wouldn't. And he made millions. Why not give a simple idea? You might have the next generation of car or airplane. What is the Lord stirring up in you? What is the Lord stirring up in you? Receive it now in Jesus' name. Yes. Father, I praise you and thank you, and I bless these your people, Almighty God. I give you all the glory, and you alone are holy, Almighty God. You make us holy like you, that you are changing us from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Lord, let us reflect your glory. Let us be like you, Almighty God. I praise you and thank you, and I give you all the glory in the name of your Son, Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord, Yes, Lord, if there's someone who wants to have a healing touch. Actually, someone who's, uh, I hear someone saying that, uh, I don't have this life that you're talking about. I, I, I know Jesus, I went to the cross, but I don't, I don't have this experience on the other side. You can. It's just the, the word of faith, the act of faith. For those who are in this room, if you want the Lord to touch you and just change your dynamic, to change you in your spirit, to change you in your body, to yes. cause you to be healed, whole and healthy, and to walk away new and different. Yes. Thank you. Come on up here. And if you folks are watching, you should be at 4980 West Spencerfield Road every Sunday. Because the miracles are going to begin to happen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Who else wants up? Pastor Michael, you want to come up here? Yes. Thank you. Lord, we praise you and thank you, and we ask you for your healing, health, and wholeness, and renewal of the spirit, renewal of the mind, Almighty God. Touch my sister.